side of it too. So don't worry about that. I still, even when I got this job, I was like, how am I gonna know how to do the budget and things like that? They're gonna, they always teach you how to do those things. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, you mentioned that you just have a new baby. Congratulations. Thank you. But how are you finding difficulties with like work-life balance and how are you trying to overcome those in such a interesting position? Good question. Um, so I've been fortunate enough that in either position that I've been in, I've had management that's been all, um, they really have good family values. So um, the first thing that when I was interviewing for this position, um, they said was, I'm all about family. So if my son has a football practice, even though I'm a vice president, I'm leaving to go see his practice or his game. And he's been very, very good about that. So they're, they're very accommodating for those sorts of things. I'm also lucky enough to have my mother-in-law nearby. So she watches my son. Um, and then, and with both me and my husband working, and he works in Norfolk and travels from Toyano every day. Yeah. <laughs> So we, we had to work out that work-life balance. Actually, for the first few months, I decided to not do the adjunct teaching here just so that I could get used to what it's going to be like when I get home from work and have only four hours before bedtime, you know, how I'm going to get everything done. So if that is important to you, my advice is when you interview for positions, let that be a question that you ask. That was something I asked, you know, are you... I was nervous in going into a management position. Are people going to be accepting of somebody who wants to have grow a family and, and have you know multiple children or, or whatever? And I think it's an important question to ask. How accommodating are you for flexing of time? Because you know more doctor's appointments are going to happen and those sorts of things. And you'll be interested to see people are very accommodating if you're upright about what you want to do. So it hasn't been. I haven't had a bad experience with it. It's, hmm. I, I don't know how everybody is about that though. <laughs> so it's been difficult. I'm very tired, but yeah. we're getting there. <laughs> Thank you. Well, yes. Um, so tell me, tell me some more. It, it, we talked a lot at seeing you about leadership, mm -hmm. and uh, and I know there's practical and theoretical instruction, mm -hmm. but can you? point back at where, because I know we've talked before, leadership, as you mentioned, is a big part of your interviews, but it's also part of, like, every one of your bulleted lists, you've got to lead the, mm -hmm. the shipyard in that direction. So what are some examples of things you've done here that, that, that gave you some insight as how to get started on that? Sure. First, I was in the PLP program, so I had to have leadership classes. Um, and. And like you said, you can learn, you know, all the theories about leadership, but you really don't know what it's like until you're in that position, you know, that whole situational leadership that some of you may have learned about. Um, and so some of the things that I've had to learn, like I said, was how to lead without being a manager of the people first. Um, you know, what kind of style of leadership is going to get them to want to follow you and want to listen to what you have to say. And that's something that you kind of just have to test the waters and see what works with the environment that you're in. It's going to be different for all sorts of people. I mentioned those eh &S task teams. Well, those are normally comprised of the craftsmen that are working on the waterfront. Like I said, the welders, um, the painters, the electricians, machinists. They have their foreman that they report to, that they have to, you know, give in their time, let them know when they're not going to be there and, and such. But as somebody who was being, who was an advocate for them, who, was, who wanted to make sure that they were getting their improvements implemented, that they had the money and the resources that they needed to get their environmental health and safety ideas off the ground, um, it's, there are so many groups, there are about maybe 55 task teams over a thousand employees in total, um, each one of them you had to lead just a little bit differently depending on the personalities in the group. Some of them are more motivated than others. Um, so it really just depends, um, I guess, on the environment that you're in. Um, some companies that you're going to work for will have leadership development programs that you can maybe get, inv excuse me, get involved in. Um, so I was part of the employee the Employee Leadership Program, ELP. It was like a nine-month program where um, 
we met once a month and then had homework in between, and this was all on your own time, just something to, to develop you a little bit more. Um, and we got to hear from different leaders from in the company and see different styles of leadership. Ask them questions like, what was the most difficult thing that you've had to do? Or, and how do, you, how do you get your people to follow you? How do you get them engaged? That sort of thing. So you'll see if you have that opportunity to take at, at wherever you're gonna go um, in your professional life, take those opportunities because, again, it's another networking um, opportunity for you. And um, you get to see their journey and how they got to be the leaders too. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> so, important insights. Thank yeah. you. Yep. Um, so what I'm kind of hearing a lot from you and is really exciting is that you sort of built your tool belt as you go. Mm -hmm. um, and I can really relate to that. I'm our sustainability coordinator here at CNU, so kind of the same thing. You just you pick up these skills as you go and all of a sudden, oh, now all these are useful. Um, but how have you been able to translate those skills that you kind of picked up along the way to resume material when you don't necessarily have like a position to, to kind of do? Does that make sense? Uh, so like, what kind so, of, like your, um, like your leadership, uh -huh. how, how have you, you know, I, I wasn't a manager, right. how do I talk oh, about my, talk about on my resume, resume? And my resume. Oh, that's a good, about, that's a good yeah, question. Yeah, so how, how, how's that translate? Okay, so I've learned that using keywords is what you really need to do on resumes, because now my um, sister-in-law used to work in that area where she would review resumes, mm -hmm. And I guess it's so computerized now that they literally put a search out there for, for these specific words. So even though you weren't a manager or something like that, you still managed programs. And you always want to say, you know, that you, you know, like you oversaw the, pr the process of or you managed um, this specific program. So you're the sustainability coordinator. Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. But you, so you manage the sustainability program, mm -hmm. essentially, right? So even though you're not a manager title, you still manage different aspects of your job. So making sure that you own that and that you know you make sure you say that you, um, I wish I brought my resume because I did some good stuff. I'll have to, give me your information and I'll, okay. I'll send you it because um, I had her go through it and because they can turn, I'm trying to think of a good example. Darn, I wish I had it. I'll have to get it for you. I'll have to get it from you. Um, but using keywords like that really helps from what I've seen. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I ask hard questions. Oh, you in the back. Easy. Uh, most of the students in here are undergraduates. Okay. Um, there are some graduate students in here. So could you just give a sense of how about potentially getting positions at the shipyard? And um, sort of the it's a, it's a community in itself that you're explaining, and so sort of um, maybe avenues to approach that aren't necessarily environmental health and safety. Sure. So you know, just sort of thinking about how to because some of these individuals may want to go into the shipyard right. um, or something like that, and it looks like it's just going to be growing and growing. Mm -hmm. So the opportunities are there. Right. And the best way if you're an undergrad is to take an opportunity to take advantage of the summer um, internship program that they have. Um, you can, I think, I think the way it works is you put maybe your top three to four areas of interest and they try to put you in those positions and you learn a little bit about um, not only that department that you've been put in, but they put you through a shipyard class, it's called the shipyard operations class. And after work, I think once a week, they take you to different areas, give you tours, talk about other operations. So you really not only, yeah, you're gonna be working in that one area during the day, but you're gonna learn all aspects um, throughout that summer. And um, you get benefits and it pays well too. And that's really the best way to get your foot in the door um, if, if you don't already have some sort of connection. But they really are have positions open all the time. Um, is, is anybody in here not a, a biology major? So, oh, okay. So what kinds of things are you interested in? I'm poli science. Um. Okay, so communications. We have an entire communications division of people who um, handle all the public relations events 
all of the photography, all of the, the videography, any article that goes out in daily press. We have our own articles. They have a really good, a really good group of people there, um, and they get to see all over the yard as well. So there really is something. For, who else? Just to give you examples, yeah. Political science and history. So political science and history. Uh huh. So we have a community um, and corporate. Corporate Citizenship and Community Relations Division or Department, and they work with um, getting people in the yard who are different politicians to come tour, um, to get support, to be advocates. They also work with um, things like uh, they run all of our food drives with the food bank. They work with United Way, um, those sorts of things. Anything to get us involved and immersed into the community and to get that good relationship because we are so big if we don't have a good reputation with the community it's, it's hard to get that support you know so there's something even for political science majors too who anybody else engineering is obviously a big one if anyone's in, interested in engineering designing um, there's if anyone's into business there's the finance side of things there's the contract side of things and anywhere you go, just having your bachelors, especially from CNU, they really want those students to come. That's why they're coming to our, our school uh, career fairs. Yes? I'm in Vermont Biology, so this is like out of left here, okay. field. but what's the difference between um, sort of work opportunities for computer engineering students and computer science students that we should have? Hmm. Computer engineering being those that are developing programs and computer programs and things like that, and then computer science being more of the statistical side of things. I have no idea. I, I think so. One of our big, um, our president's vision is to be the shipyard of the future, and um, integrated, digi integrated digital shipbuilding is huge right now. We're trying to get tablets for everybody on the waterfront, 20,000 tablets, so that people don't have to use paper anymore, which is an environmental thing. Um, we're trying to go paperless. Um, we, you eventually will be able to 3D print things. Um, they have, I think they've had the trailer here. The, I, didn't they have the digital shipbuilding trailer here? The big blue, is it coming again? Yeah, so if you have an opportunity to go and it'll, they'll show you all the different computer and technology things that we're trying to do um, because that's what kind of the Navy wants to see too because in the end it'll it'll be cost savings as well so there's if I understood correctly I'm not into computer science so but I know we have that sort of thing which is interesting anybody else Rachel what's your degree in history, history? I was thinking it was English yeah. but history. history what sort of things are you interested in um, I mean I like writing, I like archaeology, things like that, but hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to think. We have like the communications, they are the mm -hmm. people that write. They even write for any of the president's speeches. They are the ones that write for that. They have to do the research and making sure that they're up to date and that, that sort of thing. Um, archaeology, that's a little bit more difficult. I have to think about it. Right. I'm sure there's something. <laughs> Shipyard was founded in 1886, did you say? So there's some oh, there's definitely history there. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's my yeah. A bit there. Well, thank you all for coming and thank you. Thank you. We need a official record of who all was here.